Here we go, folks. It's time for another Starbase summary. We are barreling towards the next flight of Starship. Less of a barrel there. That's actually a hot staging ring. That one is for, probably, likely, for Booster 15. Remember, that's where the fire comes out when the rocket is still one big rocket and they light the engines on the second stage, the Starship. Remember, if you want, you can mute the commentary and just listen to the ambient tracks. Click on the settings and choose either a different language or Klingon if you want the stealthed commentary, cloaked commentary. <laughs> Looking around over at the launch site, that's gonna be the second tower in the background. You can tell, because there's no OLM under the chopsticks. Oops, we said OLM. LM under the chopsticks. Moving a subcooler around, are we putting a sling on a hippo? We are. See, it looks a little, it's gray. That's a good start. It's got a little head part. I don't know what the Stegosaurus back plane fins are, but anyways. Hey, here is the flame deflector over at the assembly yard. And I, last time, I think a bunch of people jump in the comments like before I even finished talking. They had those uh, rusty beams that they were using to allow, allow, align the pipes there, sort of jacking them together. Taking some tiles off of ship 32. That's, what, that's interesting. Those are interesting shapes on the tiles there. Look at that. I wonder what they're doing with the tiles. Are they, they probably don't need that many tiles to test. They're taking it into the bay a little bit, or they working in the shade, they don't want to be in the sun. It's not that sunny. Maybe it was a rain thing. In any event, back up Highway 4 a little bit, you get a rolling barrel time lapse, and this is the Rio West, air quotes, I guess, development uh, shopping area. Housing open to the public or not? I guess we're going to find out. Back up the road even closer to Brownsville, that's Massey's test site. You can see a couple different things there, including this test rig that they've once again made out of rusty beams <laughs> to test that booster section. A little bit of a tough video here because the weather was lousy, but you can see in the background a hot staging ring scooting across in the middle of the night. Here's another subcooler. says, this is a methane subcooler. I read that myself. Being rolled on an SPMT. Note the rusty beam. <laughs> I don't know, that was cribbing or something in the back, what that was. All right, here is an important thing. That yellow, yellow, orange octagon with the one in it, that is an explosives placard. There is a matching placard all the way out near pad B on the comms bunker. That means that there are explosives being worked or present in the building, etc., etc. Uh, when you see it on the high bay, mega bay area, it means they're likely working on flight termination system explosives over in those buildings, potentially on a ship that will be flying very soon. And uh, if you see them over the launch pad, I don't think we've seen them on that building before. Let me know down in the comments if we've seen that sign on that the comms bunker before. I think that might be new. They used to have that shipping container out there on the little peninsula area. Uh, you couldn't see it in this fo this photo here, where they had those temporarily uh, stored explosives. But in any event, pumping continues to work. The best information on those red things, thanks for everybody who helped out in the comments, is that those are valve actuators that are separated from the actual cryo flow so they don't freeze. They may be red because they're emergency valve actuators, but I'm still looking for a part number. Like some emergency like needs to act very quickly, uh, stop the flow of something in a rapid manner. Here we've got chopsticks and an elevator going on the second shinier tower in the background. These chopsticks are on the first tower. You can tell by the way that they Look battle damaged a little bit. Putting more cladding up on pad A. When you get the booster taking... What, what is this? Like the hot staging ring shell game? Like it goes in and out and in. Is, was this a different hot staging ring? Because that other one was moving in the dark and it was all rainy and hard to see. Did one sneak back out and then come back in again? And then this one's going out again? I wonder if it's like a floor space issue. That takes a lot of floor space. So maybe just move it out if you don't need it. Ah, the mural continues to work. Um, had the Mars banner there. Now it's just get painting a solid color, it looks like. This little weird A-shaped thing is uh, part of the Pad B gantry. What the heck does that mean? This is part of the pad. Oh, there's a matching piece on the other side. 
that will support potentially, let's say, piping and equipment for the booster, but not actually be connected to the OLM or to the launch mount itself there at Pad B is the current thinking. So we'll see exactly how that shapes up, but you can see there, there was no launch mount and they have something that gets up close to the level of where the deck of the launch mount might be. Now remember, this one's gonna have a flame trench as well. So the mount may look a little different. It doesn't need as much space below it because it's dug into the ground a little bit to help redirect those flames like a good launch mount should be constructed. <laughs> Continuing some work on some chopsticks here, a little bit of scaffolding, details on what they're doing. No, I couldn't really see any details there, could y'all? There's the Deluge tank farm. Deluge. One day I'll say that word right. <laughs> there is the orbital tank farm. It's just the tank farm. Got a couple new vertical tanks in there. We were used to seeing uh, mostly horizontal tanks, but a couple of verticals have been added. Those massive pumps and valves and everything there to keep everything flowing. Back over looking at the gantry construction again. I'm going to assume they had big uh, plates, bolts or something in the bottom sticking up that matched holes on the bottom of this and they probably bolted it in position or maybe they welded it under some sort of mount that was sunk into the concrete right they put a little bit of a cross beam in there to hold them apart and we've got another a-shaped frame let's look at the bottom of that is that front part that almost looks like a gusset like a plate on the side so there's already a part sticking up out of the ground and then that's going to match to it and then bolt together like you see on the side of the main tower is my guess on the way that that little plate was hanging off the uh, the side of the leg there People for scale up at the top of your screen. You might want to scroll back and see that. That was a pretty fast one, but uh, anytime you get people sort of in silhouette there, it's great. It's a great sense of scale. So, I, I think not painting the launch mount this time. We got a flight coming up, folks. That launch mount is a little uh, wrecked looking, a little, a little corroded looking, I guess. Usually we see a paint the mount before the launch, but maybe they just don't need to do it every time. Maybe they don't need that mount to be around for a long time. Maybe they have plans. Once this other mount gets going, I guess we're going to find out. Blue tankage and yeah, that's like very blue and yellow are both primary colors, right? Yeah, very primary color -y there. Some tarped stuff here. Is it cladding or something like that? It had labels, but uh, could not see what they were. There's the flame, flame deflector again in the background sort of clamped together on that one side to get all the pipes aligned. Ooh, what, about, what have we here? Arrow covers. Ah, yes, the Cylon ship pieces. The, the triangular things there are arrow covers. I think for the... Is that going to be the side of the booster? Probably be labeled chines if they're specifically for the booster. They look like they have uh, tile tabs, pins, standoffs, whatever. There you can see booster 15. Get a little bit of a different angle here, and you can see boosters 14 and 15. Been doing an awful lot of work on 14, and remember, that one already did the thing. Will it get a chance to do the thing again? I guess we'll see. More busy, busy work back on the Brontosaurus ribs. And was that a, a transport stand or something in the right foreground there? There's that other launch mount. It's, it's like the, the last... 5% of the work takes like 50% of the time, it seems. Here you've got uh, Booster 15 coming out of the Mega Bay. Some close-up shots of some grid fins being moved. We usually see those grid fins gone to an angle like that. And then after it comes out, they flatten out like that. I think the best guess I've seen down below is that that might be for visibility, right? To make it so it's really obvious to see those grid fins. Because remember, if you're just looking through the grid fins, they're... They don't have a lot of cross-section. They're really skinny. What does this say? Do not take cart will be used for 18.1 forward ring frame. All right. Just look at the car for scale in the foreground. What is that, like a Mustang or something, and it's got the hot staging ring behind it? Can you see how you could very easily put a car inside 
the footprint of the booster. Oh, that's cool, too. Look at the wheels on the SPMT. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like seeing that. The crab walk where all the wheels can turn almost 90 degrees to the side. Well, this is going to be a parade. It's going to be a traffic jam. It's the hot staging ring in the foreground and the booster on its transport stand in the background. And we're going to roll all of those out to the site together and then stack that hot staging ring on the booster when it's actually out at the pad. <laughs> Last we checked, there was some uh, stuff. There, there's some, some components up at the top of the booster that are difficult to get to if the hot staging ring is there. Because you see how the hot staging ring, it, it's solid in the middle. It's a flame deflector, right? And so it covers up and protects a bunch of equipment. We can't access that equipment when the hot staging ring is installed. So we've seen this happen just about every time where, oh wow, QD plate close up with some speed tape, aluminum tape covering up the holes. Uh, they, they roll it out and they may have to get to that equipment. So if the hot staging ring is on, well, you see them remove the hot staging ring with a crane. They do a bunch of work. They put hot, the hot staging ring back on again. So here, I imagine that keeping them separate is uh, they just have some stuff that they think they're going to do up there on top of the booster. And when they're done, they will put the hot staging ring up on top. Very cool. A little bit of a nighttime roll. Oh, that low hang. Oh, <laughs> the low fog is too cool. It gives it that Blade Runner uh, ambiance. Wow. Another tank arriving. What camera is this? Somebody on the passenger side turning a. I, I'm going to get to the bottom of what camera was used there because it was like above the truck on the passenger side. In any event, you got the lift booster heading over to the launch mount. Look at the moon going by in the background. Nice. If you missed that, rewind it a little bit there to catch the moon. This is an SBL camera. That fog just, gah, that really is cool. The fog sort of rolling through low to the ground and then how tall the structures are sticking up out of the fog. Like we mentioned, there's a the hot staging ring. Now they're over at the pad, rotate it around, get it lined up. It's like playing, I guess not chess. You don't crown a piece in chess, that's checkers. But in any event, coming up this Friday, they've got a chance to make their two dimensional checkers three dimensional and launch this thing. <laughs> out on its fly. That doesn't make any sense. Clearly the equipment is three-dimensional in the first place. Four-dimensional? Time's already involved. <laughs> I don't know. Argue it out down in the comments. Folks, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the operators getting the footage for us. And we will see you later on the next flight. <laughs> Take it easy, y'all.